my wife secured a position at the main office of a big retail company in a foreign land, and she swiftly ascended through the ranks there. Meanwhile, I embarked on my entrepreneurial journey, eager to carve my own path as a business owner. However, around the age of 27, my business suffered a blow amid an economic downturn, forcing me to reassess my plans and seek employment elsewhere. In this challenging moment, my wife proved to be an unwavering pillar of support. Leveraging her network, she facilitated my job search, understanding the pressing need for stable income, especially with our second child on the way. Her proactive assistance not only eased the financial strain, but also reinforced our bond as partners navigating the twists and turns of life together. Our paths crossed at the same company, albeit in different departments. Back then, she was already a rising star, her career blossoming with every passing year. I, on the other hand, was a newbie, still finding my footing in the corporate jungle. Our income disparity was stark. She, with her head start, out-earned me comfortably. One evening, fueled by a few beers, a male colleague dropped a bombshell. Whispers from her department, he confided, painted a picture of her being overly friendly with senior executives, her flirtatious demeanor bordering on notoriety. Even worse, he hinted at a web of gossip suggesting she was being passed around. Blood roared in my ears my vision blurring with an overpowering urge to confront the source of these accusations. But common sense intervened. Surely it was just office gossip, the envious ramblings of those threatened by her rapid ascent. I trusted my wife implicitly, after all, who knew her better than me. Looking back, I realized just how naive I was, blinded by misplaced trust. After the birth of our first child, I made the decision to step back from the corporate world. My entrepreneurial spirit, however, wasn't easily quelled. I launched a small business, allowing me to embrace the role of a stay-at-home dad. Our life, like any marriage, had its UPS and downs, but there was never a single red flag, not even a flicker of doubt about her fidelity. Fast forward seven years. The company ladder had been her playground, and now she sat comfortably in the director's chair. We were a family of five, three beautiful children, and a home that buzzed with life. My business, though part-time, provided a decent income, narrowing the gap between our salaries. Financial security allowed us to dream of more frequent vacations, but my wife's vision differed. Two nights a week, she'd be whisked away by work demands. I implored her to find a balance, arguing that the extra income wasn't worth sacrificing family time. Three young children needed their mother, not just her fleeting phone calls. Her unwavering response? A promotion supposedly coming next year, that would eliminate the travel burden. This next year had become a running joke, a convenient excuse that had stretched over three years. Accessibility, she argued, was all that mattered. Our children could reach her any time. But our eldest was only eight, not yet equipped with the luxury of a cell phone. This, however, was the logic she wielded to shield herself from the responsibility of motherhood. Frustrated, I'd choose to drop the subject, our conversations becoming a frustrating loop. I thrived in my role as a stay-at-home dad, a role that offered an equal financial contribution to the family. Her commitment, however, was limited to four days at home. The remaining three? Showering the kids with an abundance of toys, a futile attempt to buy her way out of their emotional needs. It didn't bother me. The joy I found in picking up our children from school and being an active part of their lives was more fulfilling than any office job could ever be. But beneath the surface, a disquiet simmered, a nagging feeling that our perfect family portrait might be hiding a few cracks. My pleas for quality family time with the kids fell on deaf ears. My wife, ever the workaholic, seemed determined to weasel out of any responsibility that didn't involve work trips and packed schedules. Our intimacy, once a vibrant part of our relationship, had dwindled to a predictable routine, once or twice a week, a stark contrast to the early days of our marriage. While I initially attributed this to the demands of parenthood, a nagging unease began to take root. Then, a chance encounter with a former colleague, someone still entrenched in my wife's work environment, stirred a hornet's nest of suspicion. Casual conversation flowed, the usual catching up. I mentioned the relentless travel schedule my wife endured, a burden I shouldered with a mix of understanding and frustration. My colleague's reaction, a flicker of something unreadable in his eyes, sent a tremor through me. He knew her routine intimately, every twist and turn of her professional life. But politeness and the awkwardness of reconnecting with a distant acquaintance kept me from digging deeper. Back home, the seeds of doubt sprouted. My wife, 
always the picture of polished professionalism, hadn't changed her dress code. Her wardrobe remained the same, a testament to the woman I loved. The spark, the connection that drew us together, that too, remained. The only glaring anomaly was the ever-increasing travel burden. My role as a stay-at-home dad provided a unique opportunity, a chance to observe, to investigate. Driven by a growing suspicion, I made a decision that would shatter the carefully constructed world I believed in. A GPS tracker, discreetly placed on her car, became my silent informant. The data it revealed was both damning and surreal. On those supposed out-of-town days, the car would remain parked outside various hotels, all clustered within a 30-mile radius of her workplace. The truth, a bitter pill to swallow, hung heavy in the air. One day, fueled by a potent mix of anger and a desperate need for answers, I decided to follow her trail. A babysitter was secured, and I found myself parked outside one of the hotels, a nondescript building that screamed anonymity. Hours ticked by, each minute an eternity. Just as dawn painted the sky in soft hues of pink and orange, the hotel door swung open. There she was, my wife, emerging from the building with my former boss, a colleague I knew all too well. The sight of them together, their casual demeanor as though they were leaving a routine business meeting, ripped the rug from under my feet. Shock morphed into a white-hot rage. I stormed out of my car, their charade crumbling before my very eyes. My former boss, sensing the impending explosion, attempted to distance himself, but I held him fast. It was a confrontation cut short, my focus solely on the woman who had betrayed my trust. In the ensuing chaos, my former boss managed to slip away. My wife, caught red-handed, stammered excuses about work meetings, a desperate attempt to gaslight me into believing their fabricated reality. Blind? No, I wasn't blind. The years of unwavering trust now lay in ruins, replaced by the bitter truth. The whispers, the rumors my former colleague had alluded to seven years ago, they were all true. Our marriage, built on a foundation of trust and love, crumbled in the face of her infidelity. In that moment, staring at the woman I thought I knew, a single devastating thought echoed in my mind. It was over. In the aftermath of the devastating revelation of her affair, the air crackled with a toxic mix of anger and confusion. I knew our marriage was over, but a part of me craved answers a desperate attempt to understand the woman I thought I knew. Go be with him, I said, my voice tight with emotion. She left, not for the arms of her illicit lover, but for the temporary refuge of a friend's house. The following days were a blur of relentless texts and calls, her pleas to return home laced with guilt-tinged apologies. She begged to see the children, the very ones she'd left to my care while she indulged in her infidelity. A week had passed, and the fog of betrayal began to clear. Rumors swirled about her workplace, whispers of a trail of broken promises leading back years. I yearned for closure, a complete picture of the deceit that had shattered our lives. We met, and I dangled the possibility of reconciliation, a carrot with no intention of ever being delivered. It was a ploy, a desperate attempt to coax a confession from her lips. She remained silent, unwilling to delve into the darkness of her actions. Undeterred, I embarked on a mission of my own. The truth, when I finally unearthed it, was a monstrous betrayal. Nine years of marriage, a mosaic built on trust and love, lay shattered at my feet. Seven affairs, a staggering number that spoke of a deep-seated yearning for something outside our relationship. Six of those men were her colleagues, faces I knew from office gatherings and casual conversations. My former boss, a man I'd once respected, was also entangled in this web of lies. Disbelief morphed into a soul-crushing devastation. Divorce became the only path forward, a painful process that marked the end of an era. Weeks later, we went our separate ways. Her pleas and cries fell on deaf ears. The woman I'd loved had, through her actions, painted me a fool in the eyes of everyone who knew us. The men she'd betrayed were colleagues, husbands, individuals with lives now stained by her deceit. Months after the split, her desperate texts continued a constant reminder of the pain she'd inflicted. But the most devastating blow was yet to come. A DNA test, undertaken with a flicker of hope, revealed a truth too horrific to bear. My middle child, the apple of my eye, wasn't mine biologically. It shattered my heart in a way I hadn't thought possible. Her denial was a final insult, a desperate attempt to cling to the illusion of a family she'd so willingly destroyed. 
Further tests confirmed the initial results. She begged me to keep her secret, a plea I vehemently refused. Fueled by a sense of justice for the women she'd wronged, I reached out to the wives of her former lovers, a letter detailing the need for a DNA test for my son. Unsurprisingly, their relationships fractured under the weight of this revelation. The news spread like wildfire, forcing her to abandon her job and retreat from the world she'd built. The men, unsurprisingly, remained silent. My son remained my son, regardless of biology. I kept a record of his biological father's identities, a document for him to access if and when he desired. A cautious optimism now guided my life. A relationship with an old classmate blossomed, a tentative exploration of love built on trust and honesty. Unlike my past, there were no red flags, no whispers of deceit. Genuine happiness, a long-forgotten sensation, began to take root. Full custody of my children offered a sense of stability. While avoiding my ex-wife remained a priority, the knowledge that she was miserable, working a mundane job, brought a small measure of solace. The world knew the truth about her actions, and that, in itself, was a form of justice. Healing was a slow process, a day-by-day -day journey. I wasn't the man I'd envisioned becoming, but the life I now embraced was filled with an unexpected joy. The scars remained, a testament to the past, but they no longer defined me. My past relationships left me questioning myself. While I'd never sought professional help, a recurring theme emerged. Women I dated often suspected I might be a sociopath. This unsettling notion gnawed at me, a constant whisper of doubt. One particular situation fueled this internal battle. I'd been trying for months to convince my then-girlfriend to accompany me on a trip she wasn't particularly keen on. To sweeten the deal, I decided to surprise her with breakfast in bed. With flowers in hand, I arrived at her apartment at a ridiculously early hour, well before dawn. My grand intention was to whip up a delicious breakfast while she blissfully slumbered. The problem? I didn't have a key. Undeterred, and with a questionable level of ingenuity, I manipulated the lock, granting myself access to her private space. My heart skipped a beat as I entered her bedroom, the flowers nearly tumbling from my grasp. There, in her bed, nestled amidst the tangled sheets, lay my girlfriend, not alone. A stranger, a man reeking of stale alcohol, shared her embrace. Disbelief morphed into a cold, calculating calm. Retreating to the kitchen, I needed a plan. Time was of the essence. The stranger remained unconscious, but who knew for how long? I spotted his discarded pants and wallet, a silent beacon of opportunity. His wallet held his ID, his gateway to a world of personal information. While the pancakes sizzled on the stove, I embarked on a digital excavation. Armed with his ID, I infiltrated his Facebook profile, uncovering details like his parents' and sisters' names. A background check revealed a few minor possession charges, nothing too serious. His credit card details were also dutifully copied a twisted trophy for my unconventional mission. But I craved more, a deeper understanding of the man disrupting my carefully crafted plans. Delving into the seedier corners of the internet, I managed to purchase his social security number, completing the digital dossier. Back in the bedroom, the aroma of breakfast mingled with the stale scent of alcohol. The sheets were pulled back just enough to reveal their naked forms, a tableau of betrayal. My phone, a silent witness, captured a series of unflattering photos, a visual reminder of their infidelity. Breakfast, though intended as a romantic gesture, was now a weapon, a twisted symbol of control. As the pancakes cooled, I contemplated my next move. Returning to the kitchen, I retrieved the doorstop from the front door, a mundane object now repurposed for a darker purpose. A chair, dragged into the room in near silence, awaited my occupation. The bedroom door, slammed shut and locked, became their temporary prison. The doorstop, wedged under a forgotten shirt, served as a flimsy barrier. The clock, its alarm set for a mere three minutes, became my countdown. The shrill cry of the alarm pierced the pre-dawn silence. My ex, startled awake, fumbled to silence the insistent beeping. The breakfast tray left on the nightstand became a cruel mockery of my original plan. Her initial confusion deepened upon seeing me, a silent sentinel in the corner of the room. A strangled cry escaped her lips the words oh duck tumbling out in a mix of fear and resignation. I instructed her to remain seated, a quiet command infused with a hidden threat. She knew me well enough to comply, 
her face contorted with a mixture of fear and loathing. The situation, once envisioned as a romantic surprise, had become a twisted nightmare. Shame and a twisted sense of justice fueled my next actions. The breakfast, once intended as a romantic gesture, now morphed into a prop in this bizarre play of control. As the pancakes sat untouched, I outlined my plan for my ex and her unwelcome guest. Their groggy confusion was no match for my steely resolve. Get out of bed, I instructed, my voice leaving no room for argument. Walk to the other side, bend over, and wake him up. Kiss him, and tell him there's someone you want to introduce him to. Make it clear, no yelling, no getting out of bed. My ex sputtered a frustrated retort, but I cut her off, a cold fury lacing my tone. Be quiet and do exactly as I say, I warned. This ends now, or this ends very differently. Her fear was palpable, a silent acknowledgement of the power I wielded in this absurd situation. She complied, crawling back into bed beside the still unconscious stranger. He stirred, confusion etched on his face as he met my gaze. Who are you? What the heck is going on? He mumbled, the remnants of inebriation clinging to his voice. Just sit there quietly, I instructed, aiming for a semblance of reassurance. Everything will be all right. My ex, her voice laced with desperation, urged him to comply. Just do what he says. You have to listen. The breakfast remained untouched, a silent testament to the twisted reality they now inhabited. Fear hung heavy in the air, a suffocating weight that constricted their breathing. I offered them the food, but the man recoiled as though it were poisoned. I'm not eating that, he muttered, his voice laced with suspicion. My ex, her eyes pleading, tried to reason with him. Just eat it, she urged. We have to. They reluctantly took a bite, their faces contorted with anxiety. Each mouthful was a struggle, convinced they were consuming their own demise. Finally, with a satisfied smirk, I ended this morbid charade. All right, that's enough. You can stop now. Relief washed over them, a palpable wave in the stagnant air. They simply placed the plates back on the bed, the appetite for breakfast long gone. The real game, however, was yet to begin. Listen carefully, I said, my voice regaining a cold, calculating edge. I have enough information about both of you to turn your lives upside down. Your reputations, your jobs, your homes, everything you know could crumble in an instant. I can make your lives a living hell, a place where suicide seems like the only escape. I painted a vivid picture of their potential downfall, a scenario so horrifying it left them speechless. But, I continued, a glimmer of a twisted mercy entered my voice. There's another way. I'm not a monster. All I ask is that you disappear from my life forever. No more contact, no more drama. You'll move to New Mexico together, a fresh start. Their eyes darted back and forth a silent conversation passing between them. I grabbed their discarded clothes and tossed their phones back onto the bed. Call your employers, I instructed. Right now. Quit your jobs. Make it clear you're relocating. They complied, their voices trembling as they made the calls, severing ties with their old lives. Excellent, I said, a hint of satisfaction tinging my voice. Now, Jenny, contact your landlord. Tell them you're moving out within two weeks forfeiting your security deposit. She followed instructions, her spirit broken. One last piece of the puzzle remained. You have a week to find an apartment in New Mexico, I announced. I'll cover the security deposit, but any deviation from this plan will have dire consequences. I painted another gruesome picture, this time involving a gruesome suicide staged in their new apartment, a final act of humiliation for the world to discover. With that final threat hanging in the air, I turned and walked away. Over the next few years, I kept tabs on them through a network of fake social media accounts. They moved to New Mexico, their relationship seemingly enduring. My ex even became pregnant, a development that fueled a flicker of morbid curiosity. Fueled by a desire for what I perceived as justice, I embarked on a final act of manipulation. During a trip to New Mexico, I planted drugs in his truck, a carefully crafted setup designed to land him in trouble. An anonymous tip alerted the authorities and their new life in New Mexico took a dark turn. Relief washed over me as I slammed the door shut on that twisted chapter of my life. A few days later, a notification on my phone heralded a development more shocking than I could have imagined. Scrolling through Facebook, my blood ran cold as I stumbled upon news of his arrest. The charges, bogus on the surface, 
were nonetheless enough to land him in prison for the next two decades. His past, a web of criminal activity, had finally caught up with him, the carefully placed evidence adding fuel to the fire. News of her situation arrived through the grapevine. Struggling to navigate single motherhood, she found refuge in a women's shelter, a stark contrast to the life she'd known. The weight of her choices became painfully clear when she made the heart-wrenching decision to put their daughter up for adoption. Following its aftermath proved impossible. She vanished from the digital landscape, a ghost swallowed by the anonymity of the city. My suspicion gnawed at me. Homeless, adrift, and alone seemed to be her unenviable fate. The betrayal had been a seismic event, shattering the carefully constructed world my wife and I had built together. Ten years, a tapestry woven with both joy and hardship, had culminated in this devastating act. It was the very resilience we demonstrated through those tough times that had fostered a deep connection, a bond I believed unshakable. 2020, the year I proposed, remained a beacon of light, a year filled with the joy of our wedding, a honeymoon that rekindled the embers of our love, and a renewed dedication to nurturing our relationship. We were both flourishing professionally, promotions a testament to our hard work and ambition. Starting a family, the next chapter we eagerly awaited seemed just around the corner. We were on top of the world, or so I believed. Little did I know, our elation stemmed from vastly different realities. 2019 marked the beginning of a slow descent. A casual friendship with another couple, a co-worker of my wife's, blossomed into something far deeper. Their children brought laughter and joy into our lives, a welcome addition to our social circle. Everything shifted when his wife unexpectedly became pregnant during the pandemic. My wife and this man, drawn together in a way that transcended friendship, began a clandestine exchange of texts, a constant undercurrent beneath the surface of our seemingly happy lives. Their affection, more pronounced than I was comfortable with, became a nagging discomfort. While our community embraced a touchy-feely approach to relationships, this felt different, a secret language only they understood. Their solitary outings, the subtle shift in my wife's demeanor, an overprotectiveness towards him that seemed unwarranted, planted seeds of doubt. Betrayal had never crossed my mind. Thirteen years, built on a foundation of trust and unwavering commitment to monogamy, lulled me into a false sense of security. One fateful night, after a gathering where everyone else had left, the truth shattered my reality. My wife, fueled by a desire I couldn't fathom, was on the precipice of a betrayal that would forever alter the course of our lives. The anger simmered, a potent brew threatening to boil over. I ejected her from our home, allowing myself a 72-hour hiatus to grapple with the maelstrom of emotions threatening to consume me. The other man, the supposed friend, wasn't any better. He confessed his infidelity to his wife before I could, their reactions mirroring the turmoil in my own heart. Later that week, the other betrayed spouse revealed a truth that cut deeper than any wound. The affair had been a festering sore for a year and a half, predating our engagement. Multiple encounters, a tangled web of lies, and a sickening distortion of the term friendship painted a picture far darker than I ever imagined. To add salt to the wound, this man, who I considered a confidant, twisted the narrative to justify his actions, claiming I'd somehow greenlit his betrayal. The world spun a kaleidoscope of emotions leaving me utterly devastated. Weeks have passed, and the storm within me has begun to settle. The journey ahead will be arduous, a path paved with grief and the slow, painstaking process of rebuilding my life. But amidst the wreckage, a flicker of hope remains. The outpouring of support from loved ones, the shared experiences from others who've walked a similar path, these are the life rafts I cling to as I navigate the uncharted waters of this new reality. The world as I knew it shattered in a million pieces. The discovery of my wife's infidelity sent me spiraling into a dark abyss of emotions. Drinking became a crutch, a desperate attempt to numb the throbbing pain. Tears came freely, a relentless torrent mirroring the storm brewing within me. The urge to smash things, a primal scream for release, found its outlet in broken objects, a chilling testament to the devastation I felt. Therapy became my lifeline a safe space to navigate the wreckage of my life. Thankfully, my friends, their unwavering support a beacon in the darkness, surrounded me with love and understanding. My wife, seemingly remorseful, took full responsibility for her actions. No manipulation, no cunning attempts to deflect blame, she owned her mistakes with brutal honesty, confessing her shame to our friends. 
but the seeds of doubt had been sown. The affair, a festering wound that had gone unnoticed for far too long, gnawed at me. The trauma of catching them, etched indelibly in my memory, cast a long shadow over her remorse. Weeks of introspection, a painful odyssey within the depths of my own soul, finally yielded a decision. Separation, a necessary step on the path to healing, was the only course of action I could fathom. I told her, with unwavering resolve, that she needed to move out. Our relationship, a once vibrant tapestry, lay in ruins. Building a future together, the very notion felt like a cruel joke. The dream of children, a mere three weeks old, now seemed like a cruel mirage. The world had shifted on its axis, and I was left to grapple with the fallout. Six weeks passed in a blur. My wayward wife, nomadic by necessity, bounced between friends and family. Our conversations, few and far between, had been confined to logistical matters, a strained courtesy masking the gaping chasm that separated us. An email, a tentative step towards disentangling our lives, addressed the thorny issues, finances, pets, furniture, the looming question of who would keep the house. I yearned for an amicable process, a clean break that would allow me to heal and move on. Then came the bombshell. Ignoring my email's intent, she bombarded me with declarations of love. A glimmer of hope, a desperate plea for reconciliation. It felt like emotional manipulation. Days bled into one another as I weighed her words, the sting of betrayal refusing to fade. Then, at text, she was returning home, expecting our disagreement to be water under the bridge. Roommates? She suggested, oblivious to the absurdity of the proposition. My boundaries forcefully asserted, left no room for misinterpretation. Therapy, a haven of guidance, had equipped me to deal with her emotional onslaught. She craved reconciliation, painting a delusional picture of a stronger-than-ever bond. The mediator, a neutral observer, echoed my sentiments. Our marriage was beyond repair. The irony of her situation wasn't lost on me. Homeless, she claimed, despite the comfort of friends and family and a salary that dwarfed mine. Divorce, the inevitable conclusion, was the only path forward. Financially strapped, I offered her the house we rented, a burden I couldn't bear alone. A new apartment, a fresh start, awaited me in April. Until then, I sought refuge in a friend's house, the anxiety a constant companion, a stark reminder of the life I'd lost. The road ahead promises to be long and arduous, paved with the shards of a shattered dream. But with time and the unwavering support of those who truly care, I will rebuild. The light at the end of the tunnel, though faint, was finally becoming visible. I'd secured a promising new apartment, a fresh slate upon which to rebuild my life. Dividing our belongings and caring for the pets became a delicate dance, a constant negotiation in the wreckage of our marriage. When I informed my soon-to-be ex-wife about informing the landlord of my impending departure and requesting a rental reference, pandemonium erupted. Her accusations, rooted in a distorted reality, painted me as a villain intent on evicting her. The irony of the situation, considering her financial security, was lost on her. A phone call, a frantic plea for sympathy, arrived last week. Abandoning her during her crisis, she called it, a manipulative attempt to rewrite history. Therapy, a space for truth and accountability, became a battleground. My efforts to discard items associated with her affair, a tangible symbol of the betrayal, were met with outrage. The baby planning book, a cruel reminder of a future stolen, became another casualty in this emotional war. Progress, albeit slow and arduous, had been made on the emotional front. Boundaries, clearly defined and fiercely protected, were my shield against her emotional manipulation. The therapist, a neutral observer, became a beacon of sanity. Their intervention, a much-needed check on her delusional thinking, held her accountable for her actions. Yet, the emotional instability she displayed was undeniable. A hysterical state, fueled by a refusal to accept responsibility, threatened to derail the separation process. Financial planning, a crucial step towards an amicable separation, my original wish, seemed out of reach. Her cooperation, essential for a smooth transition, was nowhere to be found. Empathy, a casualty of her actions, was a forgotten concept. Everything post-discovery was a series of injustices done to her, a warped narrative that defied logic. The therapy sessions, intended to facilitate communication, became skewed in her mind, 
interpreted as personal attacks. Two weeks loomed on the horizon, the date of my liberation. Patience, a virtue in short supply, became my mantra as I navigated the financial negotiations. The fear of her unraveling completely was a constant shadow. The audacity of her demands during the financial settlement was staggering. Egg freezing, adoption fees, repayment of wedding gifts, a financial wish list fueled by narcissism. Accusations of abandonment and manipulation were wielded like weapons, a desperate attempt to rewrite the narrative. The secret depletion of our joint account, a violation of our agreement, revealed her true character. The therapist, in a later conversation, confirmed my suspicions. A narcissist, they labeled her, urging me to distance myself from my own sanity. My new address, a closely guarded secret, was somehow breached. She appeared on my doorstep unannounced, her refusal to return our pet a blatant act of defiance. Prescription medications, a bizarre addition to her list of demands, became a new battleground. Blocking her number, a necessary step, only led to her resorting to harassing calls from unknown numbers. The self-proclaimed victim, the one in need of help, became a chilling caricature of her former self. The therapist's diagnosis, PTSD, resonated deeply, a fitting descriptor for the emotional carnage she'd left in her wake. The path ahead, though fraught with challenges, held a glimmer of hope. With time, distance, and the unwavering support of loved ones, the scars would heal. The digital silence was deafening. After blocking my ex on every platform imaginable, the barrage of texts, calls, and emails finally ceased. Thankfully, my community, a true source of strength, had followed suit, essentially ostracizing her. Yet her ghost still lingered in my inbox. Elusive emails, thinly veiled attempts to lure me back to therapy, a ploy to rebuild her tarnished reputation within our social circle, I suspected. Blog posts, a desperate attempt to downplay her infidelity, arrived periodically, interspersed with updates on our pet, a cruel reminder of the life we once shared, and a clever tactic to maintain a semblance of connection through shared responsibility. The question of our pet was a constant tug of war within me. Guilt gnawed at my conscience. Was denying her full custody truly the right thing to do? But then reason prevailed. The pet, originally mine, became a manipulative tool, a way for her to maintain a foothold in my life through coordinated pick UPS and drop-offs. No contact, absolute and unwavering, became my mantra, a shield against the emotional turmoil she threatened to unleash. Two and a half months into my new reality, the road to healing remained a winding path. Good days, sprinkled with newfound contentment, arrived sporadically. Distraction became my coping mechanism, a bulwark against the loneliness that threatened to engulf me. Reframing the experience, labeling it a journey towards peace and freedom, offered a glimmer of solace. But the shadows still lurked, casting a darkness that threatened to consume me. Depression, a constant companion, ebbed and flowed, leaving me numb and questioning the very purpose of my existence. A fantastic therapist, a lifeline in this emotional storm, offered invaluable guidance. My friends, a pillar of support, showered me with love and understanding. Hobbies, once neglected, provided a welcome distraction. A self-care routine, meticulously crafted, became my armor. Yet, even this formidable arsenal couldn't completely shield me from the pain. The other betrayed spouse, a beacon of strength in this harrowing journey, became an unexpected confidant. Years of friendship had blossomed into a deep bond, a shared experience forging an even deeper connection. Her resilience, a testament to the human spirit, served as a guiding light. However, the scars remained. She, too, was navigating the treacherous waters of divorce, a shared burden that both united and distanced us. Our first wedding anniversary, a stark reminder of the life stolen, arrived a few weeks ago. Twelve years, a tapestry woven with love and laughter, lay in ruins. The betrayal, a fresh wound, reopened, unleashing a torrent of emotions, anger, despair, and a crushing sense of unfairness. The life we meticulously built, a monument to our shared dreams, had been shattered by her deceit. The knowledge that she'd entered the marriage under false pretenses, a violation of my trust, was a bitter pill to swallow. Grief, a heavy cloak, enveloped me. The life I envisioned, the future we planned, had been ripped away. Yet, amidst the wreckage, a flicker of hope remained. A recognition of my own worth, a belief that my life held immense potential, propelled me forward. 
While the solitary path wasn't one I'd chosen, it was the one I was forced to navigate. The pain, a constant battleground, refused to completely surrender. But with each rigorous workout, each tear shed, each honest conversation with my therapist and friends, I chipped away at its hold on me. The journey to healing, though arduous, had begun. The reflection in the mirror barely resembled the man I used to be. The betrayal had etched lines onto my face, a testament to the emotional toll it had taken. But beneath the physical changes, a quiet transformation was taking place. The pound started melting away with a renewed commitment to healthy living. Fresh air and sunshine, once taken for granted, became daily rituals. The solace found in nature, a silent companion, offered a welcome respite from the internal turmoil. Reconnecting with friends, a lifeline in this storm, became a priority. Laughter, a forgotten melody, slowly re-entered my life. Prioritizing sleep, a long-neglected necessity, finally received due attention. These seemingly mundane steps became the building blocks of a new foundation. Medication, a tool for managing the crippling anxiety, became an unwelcome necessity. Progress, though measured in inches, was progress nonetheless. The divorce proceedings, a tedious formality, offered no catharsis. Filing the paperwork, a symbolic closing of a painful chapter, brought a fleeting sense of accomplishment. But the shadow of her unpredictable behavior loomed large, casting a dark cloud over the fragile peace I was trying to build. Work, once a source of satisfaction, began to feel like a Herculean task. Operating at a fraction of my capacity, the demands of my career felt overwhelming. My supportive boss, a beacon of understanding in this chaotic time, could only do so much. Living in the present, one day at a time, became my mantra. Compartmentalizing the pain, a necessary coping mechanism, allowed me to function. But the underlying hurt, a constant undercurrent, refused to be completely silenced. Was I truly moving forward or simply going through the motions? The line blurred at times. Hope, a fragile flame, flickered tentatively. Emotionally drained, like a wilting flower deprived of sunlight, my zest for life felt dimmed. The shadow of her narcissism, confirmed by professionals, clung to me like a shroud. Reconciliation, a concept that once held a sliver of hope, became an abhorrent thought. Indifference, a distant dream, was a far cry from the raw repulsion I still harbored. The loss I grappled with went beyond the physical separation. It was the intangible sense of security, the unwavering belief in myself and my path, that had been so ruthlessly shattered. Loneliness was only a part of the equation. The emotional scars, raw and exposed, were a constant reminder of the trauma I'd endured. Reading stories of others who had risen from the ashes, while offering a glimmer of hope, also fueled a pang of envy. Their strength, a testament to the human spirit, served as a beacon in the distance. But the journey was a personal one, and the pace would be dictated by my own healing process. Comparison, a thief of joy, was a path I refused to tread. There would be those who had it harder, battles yet unseen, burdens yet to be borne. My focus, however narrow, had to be my own recovery. The road ahead, though arduous, was a path I was determined to walk. The scars, though permanent, would eventually fade, leaving behind a stronger, more resilient me. Finding self-compassion amidst the journey of personal growth is something I aspire to achieve. It's not always easy, as I grapple with the reality of not yet reaching my desired destination. However, I endeavor to view this phase of my life as a season of learning and growth, knowing that it won't last forever. To anyone else facing similar struggles, I extend my sincerest wishes for perseverance and success. Recovery, whether it be from setbacks, hardships, or simply the trials of life, is indeed a lengthy and often chaotic path. But it's also one filled with valuable lessons and opportunities for growth. So, hang in there, stay resilient, and keep moving forward.